So here's the other panel. It's been doing great. No issues with this. This is what we're gonna do, same kind of thing. All right, post, three and a half inch. It's three inch inside, three and a half outside. Gonna do two of these combiner boxes. But I got all the holes are dug, ready to go. And over here, it'll, all the panels will run up to this corner. I have two combiner boxes here. And I got to dig this trench out. And I got to be careful because the other panel is already buried in here. It's about two and a half feet deep. So I'm going to try and dig next to it. I got to miss the water lines and power lines. And there's a lot to miss now. Plus, there's a lot of roots in here. There used to be a couple of big trees. I'm going to get up to this wall, get in there, and into the power wall. All right, guys, I got all the vertical pipes in, got the top caps on, and next up we're going to do the horizontal pipes. So we'll have to level them all out and scaffold it up, so let's get started on that. Okay, so I've got this roughed into place. It's not straight, it's not level, it's not exactly in the right spot, but it's close. So it's just roughed in, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, work it, you know, anymore until I get the other side roughed in. Then I'll do them both at the same time. I got the back row all leveled up and straight. It's all in place. The posts are 12 feet apart. In the center here, I used a piece of angle iron and clamped it up so that it came together nicely. I could probably weld that if I wanted to. Probably don't have to. Um, yeah, I wiggled it all into place. I probably could tweak it up just a little bit more. Let's take a look down the row here. I shot it with a laser last night and it looks pretty good. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the front row and I'm just gonna rough it into place and make sure that the angle is gonna be good and that I don't need to move the back around, raise it or lower it. But then I'm gonna go ahead and like fix the back one in place. I'm not gonna pour all the concrete, but maybe just hand mix some bags just to get the back set before I go ahead and, uh, you know, fine tune the front. Because the front one's hard. Because not only does it have to be straight and level, but it has to be exactly parallel to the back row. So anyway, I'll get started on that. So I'm working on setting the bottom rail now, 
and this uh, pressure treated board is just for mock-up I'm not using any pressure treated in the rack it's all structural steel schedule 40 and extruded aluminum but just to mock it up to get the angle so what I'm doing here is I can raise and lower this bottom rail to get exactly the angle I want and I'm shooting for yeah, 25 to 29 degrees, somewhere in there. Anywhere in there will be just fine. So, gonna finish that and get this guy in place. All right guys, so I thought I'd do a quick review of what's happened to get us to this point, right? So I started off by picking up some Schedule 40 structural steel pipe, three inch inside diameter, three and a half outside. These are 21 foot sticks and I got seven of them. All right, so I brought them home and cut them up with a plasma torch. So basically you got one, two, three, four for the, for the rails, for the parallel ones. And then the verticals, I just cut one in half for those two, cut that in half for those two. So those are 10 and a half each. And then all four of these were cut from one stick. Okay, then you go to Iron Ridge and you pick up all this uh, connector stuff like these uh, post caps, rail connectors, all the rails, everything you need from Iron Ridge. And start it off with the first thing I do is I'll set up the back rail first. Okay, and on the back rail, all you got to do is get it straight and parallel. You know, basically where you want it. You can see that it's straight straight and parallel and that's all you really got to worry about okay scaffold it all up I got it set up pretty this is pretty tight this can't move too much and then I go ahead and I put a thousand pounds of concrete just to hold the bottoms in place so they're vertical perfectly vertical and they're all just tacked into place there so it can't move so once that back is in place then you can work on the front rail Okay, and again, it's got to be straight and level, but now it also has to be perfectly parallel to the back. So this makes it a lot harder to do this part. And that's why I like to have that back row fixed in place with the concrete so it's not moving around when I'm trying to get the front one in place. So the next step then is I put these two by four um, rails on here. Now, I'm only using the two by four temporarily because my iron ridge rails are still in production on the roof and i want to minimize the time that we're going to be down so i'm using this temporarily but you'll use your regular extruded aluminum rails so the idea here is the distance between here and here is the same all the way across so if you're straight and you're level and the distance is the same all the way across then you're in pretty good shape I also measure the, at the base that they're all the same distance there too. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm going to tweak this around a little bit today and finish the scaffolding, get it all set to go, and we're pouring concrete tomorrow.